I would love every one of you, no matter what age or stage, to really take a breath today and think, what am I doing to educate my child about their body, other people's bodies, about public, private and protective behaviours? All of this links together and also relationships. You know, most of my kids want relationships, but you can't have a girlfriend until you've really had a friend. Friendship takes levels. And many of my boys who want a girlfriend, I have to talk to them about hygiene, for example. So this all links together. And I have on my website the books I have used for many years. And in this week's blog, some fantastic resources that really explain to kids about their body changes, about other kids body changes and then there's a beautiful one called the secret business of relationships love and sex hi everyone welcome to the sue larky podcast as i always say you have to embrace difference to make a difference let's dive into today's podcast Hey, Sue Larky here. I'm a little bit concerned when I mention today's topic, some of you are going to turn off. Yet, I actually think this topic is relevant to every age and stage. And you might be about to think, what's she talking about? Well, actually, today's topic is puberty. But for me, people leave it too late. You, puberty is also teaching children about protective behaviours, about their bodies, about private and public. It's not just about body changes. It's about noticing men, women. You know, that's in my day, they would, you know, the sex education class. Well, actually, I think it needs to be an ongoing conversation. So whether your child is three or you have an adult, I still think we need to talk about this, particularly in the world of the internet where some adults are getting into inappropriate websites who have autism spectrum. We need to teach these an ongoing conversation around puberty and sexuality and um, body changes, not only in yourself but in others. So Please, even if you have a young child, don't turn off. I really think this has some interesting things for you to think about. I also would encourage those of you that are going, oh, puberty, teenage. Actually, do you know what the average age of puberty is now? I want you to take a moment and think, what age do you think children's bodies start changing? They say 10.2, so that's like year four. Yet most schools don't teach interrelate and sex education till much later, normally around year six. And many of you, I'm sure, remember that awkward lesson. I can still remember in year six sitting in class and my teacher trying to draw some drawings on the blackboard that I just did not relate to. And that is one of the reasons I'm really excited about this fantastic new book for girls called The Autism Friendly Guide to Periods. Now, As I say, it's for girls. I actually think it's really important boys learn about this too. I mean, it's so boys need to know about periods. Boys need to know about girls' changes of bodies and how they change differently. My son's lucky to have two sisters, so he is educated about these things by being around females. But Many of my boys on the spectrum end up saying embarrassing things to girls because they haven't been taught about the changes in girls' bodies and about periods and about um, menstruation and pads and all the things that go with it. And this new book by Robin, who is on the autism spectrum, is fantastic. It includes photos and pictures and information. See, the truth is kids don't know what to ask. I mean, what, 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 what is their knowledge? What are they going to ask? And when they end up asking, people get a bit awkward. Isn't it better to give them a book that explains the body changes in boys and girls, explains periods, has photos of pads? I mean, every boy should know what these things are. Um, even better, it's got the new menstrual cups, which many girls with sensory processing difficulties love because they don't like the feel of the pads or tampons. Um and they can just be put in for a whole day. They're amazing. And in fact, a lady with autism originally introduced them to me and I've recommended them to so many families and they're just 
amazing what people say. I was a bit freaked out by them at first when I first heard about them, but I've heard nothing but good results for families compared to pads and tampons and the whole mess of that. So you're really just comparing. I mean, it's all a bit messy and it's all really hard, particularly for kids who have smell sensitivity, actually, I've found over the years. So please, I would love every one of you, no matter what age or stage, to really take a breath today and think, what am I doing to educate my child about their body, other people's bodies, about public private and protective behaviours. All of this links together and also relationships. You know, most of my kids want relationships, but you can't have a girlfriend until you've really had a friend. Friendship takes levels. And many of my boys who want a girlfriend, I have to talk to them about hygiene, for example. So this all links together. And I have on my website the books I have used for many years. And in this week's blog, some fantastic resources that really explain to kids about their body changes, about other kids body changes and then there's a beautiful one called the secret business of relationships love and sex and I think many of you with teens need to remember if you don't give them the information people with ASD tend to get online and start googling they love researching so if they're noticing changes in themselves or in others aren't they going to start researching and you need to be careful they don't end up on some inappropriate websites. There are many predators out there. There, I hate to say it, but there's child pornography and things out there and there have been many people with ASD who end in trouble with the law, not meaning to, but not understanding that they're breaking the law, thinking they're just researching like dinosaurs or planets. Now, again, I know some of you are going, Sue, I don't want to hear that. Guys, I don't want to say it either. I'm I'm a bit awkward about what to say in this podcast. But remember, I always treat this podcast like I'm sitting down having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea with you, and this is what I'd be telling you. I would be saying to teachers, educators, teacher assistants, parents, grandparents, I'd be saying you need to talk about it. You know, we need to talk about the life cycle And I think we need to tell the children how you go from being a baby and crawling to walking and then all the phases of human development and really point out those changes in the body and not just their sex. You must point out the other sex as well because so often I've had boys go up to girls and just, you know, touch their breasts, which is so inappropriate, but they're curious, you know, or not realising that this girl's developed breasts. So parents, you know, just talk about body changes. Talk about your own body. Talk Just like toilet training is a little bit about modelling and talking to kids. The other thing I really think we need to talk about is appropriate touching, inappropriate touching, what we can do in public and private. And again, I think this is where you need to use books to guide you. But it is just normal human growth. So many of us think it's a big secret and shh, and we're brought up not to talk about it. I think sex education has to be an ongoing conversation. It's not a one-off sit down. Any of you whose parents did that, you would have been so awkward, turned off, not wanted to hear about it. You know, like, oh, awkward. No, 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 no. Or if you remember that lesson like me in year six, it should be an ongoing conversation and constantly talking about our body and our changes and just getting the kids then to share with you, but reminding them there are conversations you can have with your family and in private and there are things that you can do in public and reminding them about those boundaries. And this is where social scripts and social stories are great and books. I cannot recommend highly enough books that kids can read and look through. So I really would love all of you to jump on my website and have a look at the books and read them with your kids or share them with your kids or leave them in their bedroom to look at if you're not comfortable. But although this is a short podcast, I just can't tell you how important it is to have open, honest and ongoing conversations about change in body, change in um, your relationships, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, um, phases of relationships, liking someone, holding hands, inviting them out, 
all of that. You know, you don't just have sex. There's all the stages before that. And we need to talk to kids about this to keep them safe so that predators also don't be predative on them. That what, are, you know, share about your own dating experiences, share about your own romances, share about, you know, having a boy you liked and they didn't like you back and, you know, really share. And I know myself, my kids laugh at some of the stories I tell them, but I'm actually educating them through those stories. When I tell them, oh, I used to um, catch a train to after school that I didn't need to catch because there was a boy on the train that I liked. My kids are like, oh, mom, that's so weird. You know, did you talk to him? No. Did I wish I talked to him? Yes. Was it awkward? Did I have really weird feelings? Yes. Should you talk about that? Absolutely. So I would say, you know, really, no matter what age, think, what do you need to do? So if you've got a child under seven, think about teaching them about their private parts and that other people aren't to touch them and about, you know, when they go to the doctor, that you need to be there and about protective behaviours. Once a child gets to seven above, talking to them about bodily changes, remembering that they might actually be having start periods in like three years, 10.2. So starting to talk about your own periods, changes, body changes. Myself, I'm heading for menopause, you know, sharing about how they don't go forever, sharing about how it's not just about periods, it's about pimples, hygiene, using deodorant. All these things are part of puberty. So think today what you can do, how you can create the conversation, but most importantly, how you can keep the children you know and love safe because so many kids on the spectrum end up either on the internet, on inappropriate websites, or predators will um, approach them because they are vulnerable and often don't understand the rules and boundaries. I don't want to scare you. I just want to protect you. So although this is a short podcast, I would love you to jump on my website and have a look under puberty at the fantastic books that are available to help you and the kids that you know. I hope you've got some great tips and strategies to make a difference. Remember, strategies wear out and not every strategy works for everybody. If you're ready to dive in deeper to more strategies and ideas to make a difference, I'd highly recommend you consider Dr. Tony Atwood or my online courses. For more information, visit my website www.sulaki.com.au